Hello, this is Walter Leite, and this video is part two of the analysis for chapter seven of my book, um, Practical Propensity Score Methods Using R. Uh, chapter seven is about uh, propensity score methods for continuous treatment doses. In the previous video, I demonstrated Hirano Imben's dose response function method, uh, which estimates the generalized propensity score and uses it for uh, estimating the, the, the treatment effect at different doses. Now, um, in this video, I will show you reverse probability weighting and reverse probability of treatment weighting uh, for continuous treatments. Um, this comes from the work of Robbins, Hernan, and Brombeck uh, from their 2000 article on um, marginal structural modeling. And um, it is connected with the idea of the generalized propensity score, which I will show here. Um, so in this example, we are using inverse probability weighting to estimate the effect of uh, student use you know, at the school level of the algebra ratio virtual learning environment. Um, and the outcomes at the school level two, it's the mean student score on the floor, the algebra one, and of course assessment. So first I will load a data set, which already has the generalized propensity scores that I estimated in the previous video using the normal distribution. Um, now the, the inverse probability weight is, um, has in the numerator the uh, density of the treatment and the um, denominator has the conditional density of the treatment, which is the generalized propensity score, right? So um, I will first calculate the numerator, um, assuming a normal distribution, so I use the norm as the density function in R. And uh, my log log is of per examinee is my treatment dose. So I will get the numerator. So the denominator is the generalized propensity, propensity score, which I calculated in the previous video. So the inverse probability weight is the numerator divided by the generalized propensity score. So I will run that. And um, I will normalize the weight so they sum to the sample size. Um, and these are my final weights. Now, we can also calculate uh, these weights using the EPW package which also um, allows different uh, families. Um, so here, the I'm using, first I'll load the EPW library, and I'm going to use the density of the Gaussian distribution. So this, is, this will give me the same weights as I calculated previously. Uh, the numerator is uh, based on the unconditional model. The denominator is based on the model for the generalized propensity score, which I put here. You know, so it's um, log log is per examine as a function of these variables. And we have here the data. So I will use the EPW package, the EPW point. Uh, function of the APW package to get the weights. Uh, then I extract the weights and I normalize the weights. Now I demonstrate here that I get exactly the same weights that I obtained with my calculation um, of the weights using 
um, in the previous step, right? In the, when I, I use the generalized propensity score as the denominator. So you can see here the correlation is one, you know? So the EPW package is doing exactly what I did before uh, using the density uh, of the normal distribution. Now, the another option, and there, there are so many options um, for, for obtaining inverse probability weights is to use the covariate balance propensity score method. Uh, also know the CBPS is implemented in the CBPS package. Uh, the advantage of this method is that it attempts to optimize covariate balance as it estimates the generalized propensity scores. So I will load the, the function, the, the package CBPS. Um, I have here my formula for the, this is the model for the treatment dose. And I will use CBPS. Okay, so it fits the model. Um, and then I, I can obtain weights and they standardize the weights. I will normalize the weights as well. Okay, so here I have, so the, the, the maximum weight with CBPS was 10, uh, the maximum weight using the normal density um, was 15. Now in reality, in reality, the best way to compare these weights is uh, evaluating covariate balance, which I'll do in a separate video. Okay, now we also use a different method implemented in the weighted package. The weighted package is um, very helpful because it is a front end for many different uh, propensity score estimation methods, uh, generalized propensity score estimation methods. Um, so it is um, very helpful. Um, here, instead, the main improvement we'll do is that instead of assuming a normal distribution for the treatment dose, we, we use a kernel density estimation. Um, so uh, first I'll load the weighted package and it's the same model for the generalized propensity score that I had before. Um, it's still fitting this linear model. The only difference is now for the estimation of the weight, instead of using the density of the normal distribution, use kernel estimation. And that I obtain with the option use kernel equals true. Okay, so I run this. And get summary of the weights. Um, and uh, add the weights to the data. Now, um, and I will do a, a fifth option here, which is also using the weighted package, but now the method, instead of fitting a linear model to estimate the generalized propensity score, we will fit, we will model treatment doses using Bayesian additive regression trees, um, which is a, a method that was initially proposed by Jennifer Hill. So, um, and on top of that, we also use kernel estimation to actually obtain the generalized propensity score. Okay, um, so fit that. The advantage of uh, Bayes additive regression trees is, is that, or any ensemble method, will is that it will automatically detect interactions between these variables. Like I don't have to specify them in the model. So run that and get the, the weights. And now, so I now let's check the correlation between the weights we obtained. 
Um, to run the last okay so it's very interesting so the first two weights are correlate at one because it's the same calculation it's just the the first one i i implemented myself the the formula for the weight the second i use the epw package the third weight is um was using um, covariate balance propensity score, still using a normal density. And you see it's highly correlated with the first weight. Um, the third weight is using the linear model for the propensity scores, but uh, the generalized propensity scores you obtain with the kernel density estimation, it's correlated even stronger. Now, the, the, the fifth one, is where I use Bayesian additive regression trees and kernel density estimation. And this one has the weakest uh, correlation. So the next step would be to evaluate covariate balance to compare these weights. Then you would pick uh, the one that had the best covariate balance, but I will do that in a separate video.